Okay, uh, Gail here asked me, should I choose more weight to Canadian than my previous allocation due to COVID? I don't think so. I don't think there's any need to go overweight Canadian at this point. Um, but this would just be, you know, uh, uh, really, an, and why don't I address the question of how much Canadian you should have. So there are different schools of thoughts when it comes to this question. Really what I think, what I tend to follow is this standard benchmark, which is the all country world index. You'll often hear me say this is the one ETF to rule them all because this is the entire global stock market in a single fund. From there, we can look at the exposure breakdown. Here it is. And you can see that Canada is in here at about 3%. So straight up, you know, my assessment here is that if we're trying to mimic the global stock market, you really only need about 3% exposure to the Canadian market. That's it. Now, obviously, some people like to have quite a bit higher. Like if you look at a lot of these, uh, what are they? The um, uh, couch potato portfolios or the very standard model, they'll often have something called a home bias. Um, when it comes to uh, Investopedia, here we go. When it comes to a home bias, this is a really, really common thing where basically everyone, when it comes to their home country, you know, tends to invest a much higher percentage uh, in their home country, right? What they're doing here is uh, investing in domestic equities, ignoring the benefits of diversifying into foreign equities. Uh, sometimes there are some issues. We don't really have those here in Canada. You know, really what we're trying to do here is, is look at, uh, 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 you know, really I would say the argument for home bias is the fear that if we have inflation here in Canada, but we don't have inflation in the rest of the world, right? So let's say we have inflation, the value of the Canadian dollar drops relative to all other currencies. In that case, it would because you're planning to retire in Canadian dollars, you really want to make sure that you've got exposure to that Canadian dollar uh, uh, inflation in order to have enough money in retirement. Now, the, the, the scenario where this would be important is if we had a lot of inflation here in Canada, but they didn't have inflation in the US right, where the Canadian dollar got a lot weaker compared to the US dollar, that's where a home bias would be really important. My personal perspective is I'm not really worried about that. I feel that our economies are so linked that it's hard for me to imagine a scenario where Canada experiences rapid inflation and the US doesn't. Now it could happen, we're in these unprecedented times, so that would be the argument for home bias but I want to be clear that, you know, I would say that the Canadian, your Canadian exposure, you know, really doesn't need to be that high. At most, it would be about a third of your equities. So let's say you did a nice sort of 60, 40 portfolio. You know, if we look at my uh, um, economist.com, if we look at my model portfolios, uh, I always do these 60, 40. And again, these are models. So this isn't for everyone, but this is just like the standard thing that I use for the internet is like a 60-40 portfolio. And so you can see here, this would be a portfolio with a home bias where we've got 15% of the overall portfolio. So that would be about 25% of your equities because we have 60% equities. So 15 out of 60, it's 25, but 15 of the entire portfolio here in Canada. This would be, I would say, at the high end of what somebody should have if they really want that home bias. Whereas the low end, you know, if I'm clear and kind of what I would suggest is this 3% that we've got in the all country world index. So if you only have 3% in Canada, I'm okay with that as long as you are very heavily diversified. That said, if you're worried about inflation here and you wanted that home bias, then I would let you go up to about 15% of the total portfolio or 25% just of your equities um, to invest in Canadian equities. Does that make sense? Hopefully that's clear. There's a big debate about whether home bias is a good idea or not. Personally, you know, I don't necessarily feel that I need a home bias, but there are many reasons why somebody would want that home bias.